Welcome to be with us this morning as we worship and as we celebrate the amazing grace of Jesus that takes away our sin and gives us hope of being with him forever. Let's worship him this morning as we stand and sing. <coughs> Come worship Christ the King. Alleluia. Amen. Praises to him we bring. Alleluia. Amen. With grateful heart and voice, before his throne rejoice. Praise is his gracious choice. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Come worship Christ the King. Alleluia. Come worship Christ the King. Come lift your hearts on high. Alleluia. Amen. Let praises fill the sky. Alleluia. Amen. He is our guide and friend. Our lives on him depend. His love will never end. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Come worship Christ the King. Alleluia. Come worship Christ the King. Praises to Christ belong. Alleluia. Amen. Life shall not end the song. Alleluia. Amen. On heaven's joyful shore, His glory will adore. Singing forevermore. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Come worship Christ the King. Alleluia. Come worship Christ the King. Alleluia. Come worship Christ the King. Alleluia, come worship Christ the King. We worship and adore you, bowing down before you, songs of praise is Hallelujah's ringing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. 
worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Be seated, please. Pray with me. Good Father, as you can see, your people have gathered gathered in your name. Uh, Father, we, we can't sing enough and we can't really say enough to uh, just to thank you for what you've done for us uh, as your people, um, but also individually. Father, we are just, uh, we're just grateful, and so this morning we, we do. We offer this up to you, and we are mindful of you and what you've done and what our Savior Jesus has done for us. Thank you. Father, I know there are people here this morning hurting and troubled and struggling and maybe just really, really need someone to encourage them or to even step up and do something. Father, I pray that, that we will do that and that you'll put that on our hearts um, collectively or individually. Uh, Father, thank you, for, thank you for the people here who are constantly looking for and open to opportunities to serve, to to encourage and to just be there. I, I pray, Father, uh, as I've heard just different things going on this week uh, that are happening here, I, I pray that, that this place will be a tremendous, tremendous light that will draw the lost, uh, the hurting. Uh, I just pray, Father, that you'll continue to bless those that are, that are open, that are looking to, uh, to make this place, Monrovia, a place for people to come and to find you. And I thank you that we are that, uh, we are blessed to be that type of, of place, Father. Uh, be with Ray this morning, be with all those um, serving this morning, and just help us, Father, as we, as we open our minds and our hearts to you. In Christ's name, amen. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescued the souls of men. Counselor, comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost our way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost our way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Almighty, infinite Father, faithful in loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for you. always hunger for oh our hearts always hunger for 
this time let us turn our attention to the Lord's Supper, communion with him. Uh, let's take this time to steal our hearts and focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, <clears throat> as we partake of the bread which represents your broken body, we thank you for your love for us, expressed through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pray that we'll keep these things in our mind today, at this moment, and throughout the coming week. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. We know your word says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. We praise your name because you're worthy to be praised. You loved us enough to send your son, watch him die in our stead. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you again for your love, your mercy, for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. As we turn our attention to our giving, we think of all the examples of giving throughout both the Old Testament and New Testament. Father, we pray that as we share either from our, our abundance or even if we share from our need, that uh, we know you will take these things and use it to further your kingdom. Father, we thank you for <clears throat> the ministry that this church has throughout this community, throughout the world. Think of our missionaries that uh, we support. We'll be hearing from them shortly, or about them anyway. Father, we just thank you that we have the ability to give, that we can share in your work in this world and partner with you in this. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Oh, well, not very good. Good morning. Ah, a little better. All right, kids, y'all come on down front. Uh, just a, a few things uh, while they're coming down. The you know, We've been talking about believe, as you know, uh, working through the book, but uh, different thoughts. And last week we talked about worship. Uh, we really talked about the fact that, uh, you remember I had the one slide up at the very beginning and said, of, uh, you know, with all the energy we put into what we're doing right now, it's interesting in the New Testament there's never an example of this taking place. And we, we talked a little bit about corporate, you know, the, the just views for corporate worship. And I said today we would get uh, into more of a discussion of what, what really is worship and how do we worship in our heart. And we talked about John 4, 24, that God's a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. We're actually going to put that off till next week, all right? The elders had a couple of things that they want to present to you a little bit later on in the, the service this morning. So, when uh, all that's going on, you don't have to look at your clock and think, okay, it's 10:15. Uh, Ray's not up there, and I know he talks for a long time. Because when I sit down, I'm done, all right? So uh, you don't have to worry about that later on. How y'all doing? All right, y'all mind if I mention a couple more things to them? That'd be all right? All right. Uh, Bible study. That's not working. Uh, Bible study, if you... Uh, uh, haven't been making a part of Bible class on Sunday morning, uh, a part of your Sunday, we encourage you to do that. There's uh, classes for the kids and then uh, the adult classes, you know, a lot of good classes. Uh, we end up here about uh, 1030 and classes start about 1045 and go to 1130 and after that you can have lunch. We got soup today. So I encourage you to stay for Bible class. Also, uh, we've talked about this, Rick and I have, and just for a variety of reasons with travel, uh, we didn't get it started, but starting this Wednesday night for two uh, for the next two months, February and March, we're going to talk about relationships on Wednesday night, Just not just in marriage, but just relationships in general. Uh, we'll be back in the, the gathering room over here, and uh, I encourage you, if you haven't been making Wednesday night a part of uh, your uh, experience with us, I encourage you to do that for the next two uh, months for eight weeks. That's what we'll be talking about on Wednesday. Also, Valentine's dinner is coming up on February the 13th. By the way, do y'all have Valentine's picked out for anybody yet? No? Well, you, you need to think about that, okay, and make Valentine's cards for all your girlfriends and boyfriends, because I know all y'all have a girlfriend and a boyfriend, right? Oh, anyway, well, the adults, we're going to get together. Uh, those that are interested at Terra Nova's on the 13th, that's a Tuesday night, and like last year, uh, it is, uh, do what? It's 11th, uh, whatever. I'm going on Tuesday. Y'all go on Monday if you want to. It'll be better. Christine's going to be there on Tuesday, right? Anyway, uh, she'll be entertaining us. Uh, but Dan, uh, one of the things he likes to do is he, he makes that dinner free for us. So anything that you can give that night will go to our mission efforts. And uh, that's always a very encouraging thing. All right? I want to mention one other thing. I'm looking at the guys back there. Have we taken up money yet? Yes. They're standing back there looking at me like they're waiting to do something. All right. 
We're going to do Change for Jesus in a minute, but I wanted to mention one other thing. This is uh, very serious, and then I'm going to share a video that I shared with them, and uh, we'll watch it together. Is that all right? Uh, most of you, uh, all of you know Greg and Catherine, and their boys, uh, Zach, Zane, and Zephan. And Zane's out in Texas, and uh, this is his fiance, Christina, and they were to be married sometime in the early part of summer. Uh, she has had uh, lymphoma, cancer, and recently, and uh, then she went back for like a, I think her three-month test was good, but she went back for a test this past week, and uh, it wasn't good, and there's a relapse there, and they're starting to do their treatment, and they have high hopes, and they're, they're encouraged, and uh, you know our prayers are with them. But they've decided to move their marriage up now till February the uh, 11th, I believe it is, a week, two weeks from today. And so we're very encouraged with that. But uh, just in talking to them the last couple of days, and, you know, some, when, when you find yourself in a place like that in life, you know, when, when just there's sort of like a wall in front of you, you can relate. Some of you can. You've been there. And you're looking for where to go. And I, I talked to Greg and Catherine, and I was looking for something. I'd text Zane a couple of times. I was looking for something to share, a uh, word of encouragement. And there's really nothing to say, you know. And when I went to the computer and I was looking for something, I saw this. You've seen it a couple of times in the past. I've shown it to the kids before. But I just sent it to the Riggins, and uh, I got a nice response back. Because sometimes just the most simple thought is the highest words of encouragement you can have. If y'all want to go ahead and get the cups, get us going. Got a few uh, quick announcements for our youth. Hey, I want y'all quit kicking each other. That'd be nice. Uh, yeah, hey, don't forget the colors on the side so you see your colors there. So cups according to your color. Um, coming up uh, this week, we've got Winterfest coming up soon, so I need your forms and your money this Wednesday. Okay, those things will be due. Um, so don't forget to bring those in. It's very important. Uh, I need to get you a T-shirt order. So bring your forms, your money uh, this Wednesday. And then coming up on uh, Sunday, we've got our Super Bowl party. Uh, as normal, we're asking the kids to bring uh, $5 to help pay for the food and then a drink to share. We're going to be having some chicken fingers and some wings, and that will be at 5 o'clock up in the loft. And then also uh, next Sunday at 1230, we're going to have a, uh, a meeting. Uh, anybody that can uh, that wants to attend can. It's going to be over in the gathering room. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, about the youth group, 
um, just informational purposes, taking suggestions if you have stuff for activities, and then also sort of uh, setting up a time frame for maybe hiring a full-time youth minister. I know Mike had asked me this week, the elders had sent out an email about this, and Mike said, man, are y'all stepping down already? No, it's nothing like that. Uh, we're going to be here. Um, but what we are doing is we're, we're trying not to wait until the last minute, okay? We want to set up a good plan, uh, get some things um, in motion, and, and figure out where we're going. So that's going to be a good mood meeting, I think, for everybody, for you to ask questions, to get information. Again, that'll be at 1230 next Sunday uh, over in the gathering room. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. sheep of his hand and the sheep of his hand come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the Lord our God our maker worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our maker, for he sheep of his hand and the sheep of his hand. Good morning. This morning uh, we are going to recognize uh, three men who we would like to uh, uh, appoint as deacons for the uh, YAC. How many knows what YAC means? The acronym? Some know what that means. Okay. It's uh, Young Adult and Couples, and I think it's been renamed You in Christ. You in Christ. Uh, this, this is uh, for a unique group. Of families, younger families, and uh, recently we've asked the Bridge uh, group to join that. And uh, but there's there's three men that we've asked to be deacons, and we'd like to appoint them at this time. And we're going to first call Philip and Leah Garten to come up. Philip uh, and Leah have been married for 13 years. Uh, they have two children, Liliana who is four, and Liberty, 18 months. And uh, they've been members here for five and uh, about a quarter of years. Uh, second family, uh, Matt and Christy Self, they've been here for seven years. They have two children, Gavin, five, and Aiden. Uh, I'm sorry, they have three children. And one of them's named Alan. Uh, Aiden is three years old, and Jackson Allen, not quite two months, right? <laughs> okay. And uh, they've been members for six years. Then we'd like to ask uh, Caleb and Emily Vandergriff 
They've been married for 10 years. They have two children, Sydney, six, and Sadie, four. And they've been here the longest, been about eight years. And uh, Caleb and Emily have, have worked with the bridge group, and so they bring uh, a good uh, representation of that group into the YAC as we've asked the YAC uh, as the bridge members move into it. And we'd like to uh, read their certificates at this time, and, uh, and then we'll pray for them. Each of these new deacons have been given a certificate that has a personalized passage from uh, 1 Timothy 3, 8 to 13. You are well respected and have integrity, not a heavy drinker or dishonest with money, committed to the mystery of the faith now revealed and living with a clear conscience. You have closely been examined and passed the test. Your wife is respected and does not slander others. She exercises self-control and is faithful in everything she does. You are faithful to your wife and manage your children and household well. By serving as deacons, you will be rewarded with respect from others, and furthermore, you will have increased confidence in your faith in Christ Jesus. Let's offer a prayer for their leadership and their faithfulness in this congregation. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful for each couple for the family that they have, Caleb and Emily, for Matt and Christy, for Philip and Leah. Please help them as they help lead and coordinate the activities of this group and their ministry among the church here. Just help their lives to be focused on you and be with us that we might uh, assist and support them and the things that they do to your honor and glory and we praise your name that they are willing and able to do this service for this church we pray this all in jesus name amen So one week from today is going to be our Mission Sunday, and that's the way we've decided over the last few years that we will support all of our mission efforts, is that we will, uh, through contributions and pledges for the rest of the year, we will raise all of the money that we need to support our mission efforts in that one day. So that will be next Sunday. So in just a few minutes, uh, Brian Walton is going to come up and tell us about our mission efforts. But before we do that, let's all stand together and sing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i'll worship your holy name you're rich in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. 
sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Sing it out. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Be seated, please. All right, good morning. Uh, as Mickey mentioned, our contribution is next Sunday, so we want to give you a quick update on what's been happening in some of our mission efforts. So we'll start off with. World Bible School. So if you remember, our focus country is uh, Tanzania, which is right up here. And then we also have uh, one missionary in Malawi, which is this little country just south of it. And what we've been doing the past couple of years, if you can see, um, for 2015 and 2016, we had four missionaries, three English, one Swahili. Um, $20,000 was the budget for each of those years. Um, and you can see the number of students each year, uh, the lessons completed and the baptisms. So it's been increasing every year for the baptisms, so we're really encouraged by that. Um, and one thing to note that the Swahili missionary, his name is Daniel right here. And you can see each year he's had the most baptisms and some of the most uh, number of lessons completed. So we're seeing a need to increase maybe the Swahili missionaries. Um, with that, um, we don't have any really interaction with them here at the church um, because we haven't found anybody that speaks Swahili yet. So we provide inf uh, information and lessons to Michael right here, and he coordinates with Daniel with the Swahili lessons and checks in on him a couple of times during the year. All the other missionaries that speak English, um, we send lessons to them. They distribute to the students. They scan them, email them back to us. Then we grade them here and then send them back to the students and repeat the process for all seven lessons. So what we want to do next year is continue what we're doing with the three English and the one Swahili missionaries, but we want to add six new missionaries, four English and two Swahili. To do that, it's going to be another $10,000. Some of y'all have contributed already to that, and thank you very much for it. And we're going ahead and rolling this into the budget for next year. So what we'll do is we'll have Humphrey and Omri in Dar es Salaam. There'll be one English, one Swahili. Uh, that's a new area for us. We've never been to Dar es Salaam before. Then we have Edwin, who will be in Arusha with Michael. He'll be English speaking. Then we'll have Elias who will be Swahili in the Mwanza region. He'll be fairly close to Daniel. Um, Daniel's in Mahaha. Um, we don't exactly know where that is in Tanzania. When you put it in Google Maps, it doesn't come up, but we think it's around the Mwanza area from what we've gotten from the folks. And then also for in Malawi, we have Trison and Dick, um, who are the sons of Templex. So if you remember, Templex um, needed some transportation, so we provided a motorcycle for him a year or two ago. Um, unfortunately had an accident with it. The motorcycle ended up being okay, but his foot didn't do so hot. So if you can't use your foot, you can't use a motorcycle. And so while Templex was healing, his sons kind of carried on the World Bible School effort for us in Malawi. Very impressed with the work that they did, and so we've decided to go ahead and bring them on uh, as a, some support for the Malawi effort that we're doing. So those are words. Here's pictures. So Tanzania, and here is Dar es Salaam right here. It's uh, the biggest city, about 4 million people. That's where we'll have two of our missionaries that we'll support that we'll pick up that are new. Uh, in Arusha up here, uh, that's where Michael and Edwin will be. 
And then over here is Daniel and Elias. And again, there's Mwanza. And we think Mahaha is in this general vicinity. Um, not really sure. Then Willie is down here in Mbeya. He's taking care of southern Tanzania for us. Then down in Malawi is Templix, Trison, and Dick. And so I have Michael highlighted here in bold because we're asking him to kind of be the, the in-country coordinator for the missionaries that will be in the northern part of Tanzania. He speaks very good English, very responsible, um, very educated, went to the Andrew Colony School of Preaching. Um, and so we're asking him whenever we're not there that he kind of uh, takes control of the guys there, checks up on them, makes sure they have what they need, give them support that they need, help distribute uh, some of the funds to the Swahili missionaries that we're supporting, just kind of make sure that everything is running smoothly for us. Then you can see up here, the four amigos, which is what Wendell Waite has lovingly referred to us, are, are heading to Tanzania in three weeks. And so Wendell, Rick, Michael, and myself will be leaving February 18th um, to go to Dar es Salaam for about half the time and Arusha the other half of the time um, to meet the, the four new missionaries in Tanzania that we're bringing on, um, explain to them what we're wanting them to do, make sure they're on board with what they want to do. Um, all these guys have been... Uh, uh, submitted for approval from Michael, so we feel very confident that they are good guys, that they know what they're doing. But we're going to train them in the scan and email process. We're going to provide them laptops, printers, scanners, and have them start sending lessons back to us. So with that, that means we have four new English missionaries are going to be sending lessons here, which means we need more people from this church to help grade those lessons. So World Bible School is a class that is offered Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Um, you're more than welcome to come back. We meet right back over there. We'll get you plugged in. We'll show you what we do. It's very easy. You can write notes to each of the students, just help encourage them, help explain any questions that they have. Some of the times the English is pretty good. You understand what they're saying. Other times you just kind of have to guess and hope that they get the, the right intent of what they're doing. Um, but that's why we also have Michael and the guys in each of these areas that can help encourage the students and clear up anything that we can't figure out what they're trying to say. So we're looking forward to that. Again, uh, we leave three weeks from yesterday. Um, the trip cost is not a part of this budget whatsoever, so we're funding that all ourselves. Um, some people have contributed towards our trip costs, very much appreciated. Um, if anybody would like to do that, um, we'll still accept donations. But otherwise, we'll be leaving in three weeks, and then uh, Michael and myself, will. we all leave together on the 18th. Michael and myself will come back. Um, we'll be back here March 1st. We'll just stay in, in Tanzania this whole time. But as we leave to come back, Wendell and Rick are going to stay an extra five or six days and go down to Malawi and visit Templex and meet his two sons. Um, and that's just a little extra time that Michael and I just couldn't spend away from here. So we'll be back March 5th, 6th, something like that, I believe. Um, one funny note, we did get a an email from, from Templex, at least Wendell did, and Templex assured Wendell that, that it's, it's no problem if he misses his flight because there's more preaching that he and Rick need to do over there. So we're not exactly sure when they're coming back, but Templex is extremely excited. So that's our World Bible School effort. I uh, appreciate all the work that y'all are doing. And then if we talk about Kevin Benet real quick, if you remember, they're down in Porto Alegre, Brazil, uh, down in this part right here, southern Brazil. And so what we're doing with them, just so you know, um, we have been their sponsoring church for the past several years. Um, we are actually transferring that sponsorship to the Harpeth Hills Church of Christ up in Brentwood, Tennessee. Uh, some of the areas where Kevin Benet wanted to get into, we didn't quite have the expertise or the resources, I think, to really help and encourage them uh, what they wanted to do. So they uh, found some people in Harpeth Hills that have that knowledge that's going to help them. So what they're trying to do is that they're going to open up their American cookie business. And so they've had somebody that has gifted them a large sum of money already. You can see the pictures up here. They've bought a shipping container. Um, they're starting to turn it into their cookie business right here. And what they want to do with that is to be a little bit of a ministry effort for them, but it's also going to be a money maker for them. As we've talked about before, it's very, very expensive to live in Porto Alegre. So they're hoping this American cookie business will help provide some funds to help offset the cost of living down there. At the same time, they're hoping that that will provide some funds that will go into their main ministry effort, which is being a or opening up a halfway house in Porto Alegre. So they have a lady by the name of Lindsay Phillips uh, that used to be with, with the Aggies for Christ that have been to Porto Alegre several times. She's getting her PhD in organizational leadership, 
And she's planning on moving down there in 2018 to help Kevin and Benet open up Hope House, which is the name that they've picked out for this halfway house. We've talked before about them working um, with the guys at the Shakata, which is the drug and rehab uh, facility down there. Once they get out of there, they've seen a lot of men fall back into the lifestyle that they were trying to get out of. So they feel very strongly that a halfway house is what they need to help reassimilate them into the society there. And so they have a lot of people that are helping them. Harpeth Hills is on board with this. Um, it's a better fit for them. And so they are excited about what Hope House is going to do for the men in Porto Alegre. So I didn't realize that Ray wasn't preaching, so I didn't have uh, anything on Norman Jen or uh, the Baja missions, and it looks like this slide didn't copy over very well, but this is just a, a recap of where we're going with the budget for 2017. Uh, World Bible School, as we've talked about, has been $20,000. we are adding six new missionaries, so that's another $10,000, so it's about $30,000 that we're asking for the budget for next year. The Blooms, um, since we're now just a financial partner with them, we're continuing $1,000 a month support with them, but we no longer are responsible for their furlough coming back. So that was roughly about $6,000 a year um, that we were budgeting. So we're wanting to take that, and you can see the bottom item, item there, and make a special request line. Um, throughout the year, we get different people coming through asking for, for things, but we really never had any funds in the budget to provide anything. So we're hoping to have some money to do that. At the same time, if something happens in Tanzania or Malawi or Canada or Brazil where there's a one-time need, we'll hopefully have some funds to be able to help provide that, uh, that support for them. As far as Norman Jen for the Weirs, um, I don't have any pictures from them right now, but we did get a lengthy email from them not too long ago. Uh, they are working still in Abbotsford, British Columbia. Um, a lot of their, their mission effort is uh, supporting the, the small local churches all around the province. Um, it is an, an elderly, elderly congregation that they attend, so Norm has been doing a lot of celebrations of life lately, um, a lot of memorial services. Um, and unfortunately, that did take a little bit of a toll on his health not too long ago. Um, I think we talked about that maybe last time I got up and spoke, um, but he is doing better. Um, but uh, his body is going to need a knee replacement at some point, I believe, or a hip replacement, one of the two. So he's on the waiting list for that. Um, uh, Jen struggled a couple of times uh, with some health issues as well, but they're doing pretty good. They're still planning on going up to the, uh, the villages way up in the northern part of British Columbia this summer. Um, they have to wait for the logging roads to to, to thaw and, and for the, the trucking to stop before they can get up there. But they're hoping to go back up there later this summer. In the meantime, they continue to go around the small villages, encourage young Christians that are coming. They perform some marriage ceremonies sometimes, and again, just encouraging a lot of the elderly members as they approach the end of their life here on earth. Um, as far as medical supplies, um, uh, we still plan to do $2,000 for that a year. Um, it just so happens this year, Rebecca told us that the one week that she can't go is a week that Mass and Church of Christ decided that's when they're going to go. Um, we do partner with them going down there. Um, that happens to be the week that Emily is graduating, I believe, from school. And so uh, right now we're not planning on going down there this year. We may send some over-the-counter medication with the, the $2,000 down with some folks. But if Nurse Rebecca isn't able to administer some stuff, there's not a whole lot that we can do with some of that money. So we had some initial conversations just a couple of weeks ago that we may want to make this a little bit of a focus area. Um, next year, maybe get some more people involved if Rebecca can go, can go down. It's one of the more affordable trips. You just have to get a plane ticket to San Diego, and then you just take a, a local transport, or not local transportation, but you know, a bus or a car or something down into Baja, California. Um, so we're hoping maybe we can get some folks from this church to go down and see what we're doing in that uh, part of the world. So overall, uh, $58,000 is our mission budget. Again, um, we will click that all throughout the year. Uh, we set next Sunday aside as just a one-time uh, get-over-the-hurdle type thing to fund some of the near-term stuff that we're doing. If you can give it all then, great. If not, we'll have pledge cards. Just fill it out. Just let us know generally what you're thinking about doing for the rest of the year so we can plan appropriately. And then if we need other fundraisers in the year, we know when to plan for that. That's our mission efforts uh, for this church. We appreciate it very much, uh, what this church has done so far. We're excited of what we're doing. We're excited of what's going on in Tanzania. We're excited of what's going on uh, in Brazil. We think the Blooms have a very good plan put in place. Um, Norman Jen are doing well. Uh, Brother Franco in Baja is doing well. So we thank you very much for your support of our mission efforts.
Well, it's ten thousand dollars more than last year. Yeah, yeah, uh, and all that's coming from World Bible School. That's going from the twenty thousand budget last year to the thirty thousand this year. And that extra ten thousand is essentially buying six more missionaries that we can support in Africa. Thank you, Brian. Uh, you can see that uh, we've got a lot of things going on in our mission effort. Uh, so we encourage you, as Brian said, if you have any interest at all in World Bible School, uh, they'll put you to work there, and they make it easy for you. Uh, so uh, I know that they'll be, uh, be happy to have you if you want to work in there uh, Sunday mornings or, or Wednesday nights or even outside of that time. Uh, you can work with uh, Brian and my dad, and they'll... They'll set you up, and you can grade lessons uh, at some other time. Uh, but as Brian said, we are looking to raise about $10,000 more than last year. So be prayerful this week, and uh, be ready to come next Sunday as we do our mission collection uh, and help support our mission efforts. We're going to be finishing just a couple minutes early today, so that will give you a little extra time to visit. Uh, but we do encourage you to stay for one of our classes. Um, uh, please make that a, a part of your day and, and be encouraged and uplifted as we meet together and, and study God's Word. And then after class, we'll have lunch. We'll have the soups in the back, so we encourage you to stay for that. Let's stand and sing, and then we'll have our closing prayer and be dismissed. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Um, together wonderful to me here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you 
Let us pray. Dear God, we continue to thank you so much for all the blessings you give us, both physically and spiritually. And um, we thank you so much for this nation and how much you blessed us here. And we thank you for this church and the blessings and, and each individual here and the families and the jobs that we have. And we, we thank you so much for that. And we, we know that it's not the same all over the world. And um, we pray that we'll take uh, the time coming up next week and thereafter to use those blessings to help further your word, to support missionaries and, and do other things that uh, show, show your good. We um, come this time praying for uh, the Riggins family. We pray that you'll be with them during this tough time. And, uh, of course, we most of all, thank you for your son, Donald Carlos, for our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.